Welcome to Troy High School, host to the district semifinal action tonight, where we have the Sydney Lady Yellow Jackets going against the Springboro Lady Panthers. My name is Ben Ayers. Along with me tonight is Mr. Dave Helmstetter. Dave, we got a great matchup tonight. We got the Sydney Yellow Jackets coming in at the number two team in the state, 24 and 0, just rolling through their opponents. They got a tough one tonight, though, against Springboro, the Springboro Panthers, coming in at 21 and 3. Two teams that are very much offensive-minded, very strong offensive teams. Springboro averaging almost 63 points per game. Sydney about 57 points per game. Very good offensive teams. Yeah, very excited for the matchup tonight. And we'll be back right after this with our starting lineups for Sydney. Muller Trucking is an experienced family owned and operated company that's been in business for over 30 years. We have a full service fleet with top of the line equipment serving many nationally recognized clients. We are currently looking for experienced, hardworking, over the road drivers that will secure our low 10% turnover rate. We offer great pay, great benefits, frequent home time, and flexible requested time off. Our way of saying thanks to our remarkable employees. We work with you so you can work with us. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. Welcome back to Troy High School as we have district uh, district final action, semi-final action coming to you. Where the Springboro Panthers are taking on the Sydney Yellow Jackets. We're uh, announcing the starting lineups for Springboro right now. We have number four, Casey Hughes. Number five, Brianna Graham. Number 24, Kelly Worth. Number 30, Jordan Deal. And number... 12, Haley Crouch. Those are the starters. Again, two great teams against Springboro is coming in tonight at 21 and 3, 10 and 0. They were champs of the G-Walk South, one of the top teams uh, in Division 1 in our area. And going up against a great team tonight, the, 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 the Yellow Jacket Faithful have came out tonight. The stands are packed on their side of the side of the court as they're now announcing the uh, the bench players. And uh, interesting, Sydney only has four players you know, on the bench right now. Very interesting, and of course, for Springboro, the uh, key player for the Panthers is Kelly Worth. Kelly, uh, uh, an excellent guard, 18.5 points per game. She said 24 threes on the season. Uh, from the field, shooting 64%. Three-point land uh, at 39%. So a big factor in tonight will be uh, how well Sydney can contain uh, Kelly Worth. And on the side for Sydney right now, we have the starting lineups as number 10, senior guard Caitlin Davis. Uh, she's followed by number 13, uh, sophomore Carrie Nuss. Also starting is number 14. She's a 5'4 senior, Ashley Egan. And then the two big girls who will be working in the paint tonight, number 34, Sylvia Hudson, GWAC North Player of the Year. And also the center, number 55, just a junior, Selena Taborn. And S Sylvia Hudson leads uh, Sydney with 20.9 points per game. And, uh, you know, just an outstanding career for the Yellow Jackets. Exactly. We're going to take a minute here to get to our keys to the game, brought to you by Bud Bud's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Jam Ram and Salina, where the dealer makes the difference. Our keys to the game uh, for Sydney continue to dominate in the paint. Uh, Sydney with that duo of Selena Taborn and Sylvia Hudson, two very competent and standout players inside. Uh, and then also control the, the perimeter. They've got to be able to contain what the Springboro team, a very strong uh, offensive team, 
at the guard position. Springboro, on the other hand, they need to contain the big players for the Yellow Jackets inside, contain the bigs, and of course, up tempo, as we see right here, play the game they want to play, Ben. Yeah, right away, the first possession for Sydney is a turnover by, stolen away by Kelly Worth, and she gets a layup uh, to the easy two points, and Springboro's going to take the lead 2 nothing here. And yeah, not the start you want to have if you're Sydney, to, you know, coming out of the coming out of the gate. But the pressure is being put on these guards already by Springboro. Nice lob inside to Selena Taborn. It turns over her left shoulder and lays it in. Her first two points of the game. Nice lob pass. Taborn squares up. Nice bucket, and Sydney's got the game even at two. Yeah, two teams definitely of contrasting styles as there's a drive by Worth off the mark as Taborn wasn't able to get the block, but able to, to distract the shot as it comes off and it's rebounded by Sydney. Sydney's coached by Megan Mummy. Again, they're 24-0 this year. She was the GWAC North Coach of the Year. I think that was probably a no-brainer. But on the other side of the ball tonight, uh, Coach Tom Benjamin for Springboro Panthers. Again, they were 10-0 in the GWAC South. He was the coach of the year down there. So we got two great coaches going against two great teams. And they both have extensive winning streaks. So losing is very difficult for both these two teams. As we said, talking to the game, 24-0, we were trying to find things that things they do well to help them win. And when you're 24-0, I guess it all works. A little bit of nervousness on Sydney's part. A couple turnovers here in the opening minutes. Nice shot there by number 12. Haley Crouch just steps out and knocks down. I thought it was a three. Looks like it's going to be a two-pointer. Taborn, who's guarding Crouch, didn't even step out to contest the shot. Kind of stayed back on the block. And Crouch is able to open that up, try to pull Taborn out. Could, could prove successful for Springboro. Taborn with a lazy pass. It's going to be an over-the-back call. I believe that's going to be the second turnover. Or I guess the third turnover already for Sydney. Yeah, uncharacteristic for Sydney. They've got, like we said, a little maybe a little bit of nerves here in the first couple of minutes. They have three turnovers already. Can Sydney coming in at 24 and 0. Uh, GWAC, the GWAC North, some of the teams was maybe down a little bit this year, so still a great record, but Springboro, maybe it played a little bit of a tougher schedule. We'll have a couple losses in there, uh, but Interesting to see how Sydney handles the pressure. There's another turnover as Hudson loses it. She hustles back and gets the block. Great hustle there by Sylvia Hudson as she loses the ball on one end. She's all fired up now. She comes back down and gets the block. She's trying to get her team going. Springboro not ready. The ref just lays the ball on the floor. Burrow goes to execute. They're able to inbound in to number 30, Jordan Deal, who, Deal, who's fouled as she goes up, and she's going to go to the foul line for two. Spring barrel on the season during the regular season. They, uh, they shot 72% uh, at the free throw line from the field, 49%, and three-point land at about 37%, so a very good shooting team. And as we kind of alluded, their perimeter play is where it's at, and to have shooting stats that are that high, shooting most of your shots from the outside. It's, it's a mark to the success that they have and the great shooters that they have on their team. Deal is able to knock down both of those shots. And we have a sub checking into the game as number, looks like number 33, Kennedy Lewis, is checking in the 5'5 five, five sophomore, seeing her first action. Springboro putting on a little bit of full court pressure here to try to pick up the tempo. Ball's being dribbled now by Ashley Egan, trying to find a place to go. Looks like we're going to get a hand check foul. Foul's going to be on number, who was it, number? I believe that's number 30. Number 30, yeah, yeah. number 30, Jordan Deal. So just fouled on one end, comes down and picks one up, one of her own up. There's a skip pass across the floor. We're going to have the second over and back call already against Sydney. Yeah, the first three minutes of play here in the in the game, Sydney's got five turnovers. Yeah, very uncharacteristic. Just a team that averages a little over 11 turnovers per game. They're already halfway there, like you said, in the three minutes into the game. They'll settle down just a matter of time and get into the groove. 
Here's a long outside shot. Off the mark, rebounded by Taborn. Sydney chooses to slow up. Coach Bummy, I think, wants the ball to be pushed up a little bit if they get the opportunity. They pull it down, get it to Hudson. She's ready to wheel and deal here as they got the baseline look. Hudson lowers her shoulder, throws up the left-handed shot, knocks it in. Her first two points of the game. We're now going to score a 4-6. Springboro doesn't wait very long to answer as number 24, Kelly Worth, drives right down the lane and lays it in for her fourth point of the game. Sydney's only taken two shots between fouls and turnovers and things of that nature. They've not really been able to get into much of an offensive groove here in the early going. Yeah, lots of turnovers, but efficient when they get a the chance to get the ball up in the air. Number five, Brianna Graham checking in for Springboro. Again, a much deeper bench. Expect to see a lot more players coming in for Springboro. See if that's a factor, too. Got nerves and energy in a, in a big game like this. There's another turnover by Sydney. Worth's going to push it all the way up the floor. Lays it in again. It's her third right-handed layup on that side. As she's now up to six points in the night. Getting the leading scorer for Springboro coming in with 18.8 uh, .8 points per game. Not just tonight. There's Taborn as she backs down off the mark. But Worth is an all-time leading scorer at Springboro. She's going to drive right down the lane again. She's going to pick up a foul as number 10, Caitlin Davis, tried to defend her but couldn't stop her. So I was saying, again, worth six points already tonight. The all-time leading scorer at Springboro with 1,679 points. So quite a career for the senior. Worth off the mark on the first one. I think we got the eighth or ninth player already checked in here as Molly Shaneline checked in for Springboro. Worth good on the second one, knocks it down. Scores 4-11 to 11 in favor of Springboro here, just halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, Worth's three out of four from the field, one out of two at the line. Another turnover as they try to lob it into Taborn. It looks like Springboro is really trying to do a good job, as we said in the keys of the game. Can they try to control the, uh, shut down the bigs? And they always seem to try to have two people over on Taborn as she's posting. Springboro re resettles here as the first shot was unsuccessful with an offensive rebound. That's Worth drives in, flips this one up underneath, left-handed, and already Worth at nine points for the game. Total domination so far here in this first quarter. Great start by Kelly Worth, of course, uh, player of the year for Springboro. Yeah, player in the G-Walk South. Here comes that backside help. Looks like we're going to have a foul on the floor, though, before we can get to that. This one's going to go on number, number 10, Molly Shaneline, is going to pick up her first foul. Sydney will inbound from underneath. And more subs, number 41, Hanny Ingram, and checking back in uh, is number four, Casey Hughes for Springboro. In this game, uh, uh, the G-Walk, here's a deep three from the outside by number 13. Gary Nuss Gary hit a Nuss. shot there right at the right time for Sydney. They yeah. needed that one. Yeah, man. big pickup. That's going to get them to seven points in the game. Just a 32% three-point shooter, but able to knock that one down. It's a huge shot. Yellow Jackets three out of four from the field. It's another one off the mark, but offensive rebound comes to Springboro. And with the size that Sydney has, that's definitely something you wouldn't expect to be seeing Springboro do. But that's two times down the floor in a row that they've got offensive rebounds. Here's a step back three off the mark. And Hudson goes to run it down. It's deflected off of number four, Casey Hughes. As I was saying here, we're not short on talent at all. The GWAC selected eight players this year, uh, and they have three divisions, North, South, Central, but eight overall to represent their team on the all-conference team. Sydney has representatives in Selena Tabor and Sylvia Hudson and Kelly Worth and Casey Hughes from Springboro playing. So half of the all-conference players are playing in this game tonight. Nice move by Hudson to the basket, and she'll draw the foul. Hudson tonight, one for one from the field in a bucket. And she'll go to the line. Yeah, Sylvia's going to step to the line, a 63.4% free throw shooter on the season. Again, so she's left-handed, likes, likes to go to her left. And it's twice now we've seen her drive in and, and spin to that right shoulder, able to use that left hand as she goes up. 
Sydney uh, on the season about 63% at the free throw line. Hudson knocks the first one down, or second one down there. Getting Sydney to eight, just down by five now. And looking out again, we've seen a lot of substitutions on the Springboro side. I don't think we've had any substitutions yet for, for Sydney. Sometimes in a game like this with the emotions and the high energy, sometimes you can kind of get drained a little bit, but getting short bench, just four players on the bench for Sydney. Springboro working the ball around. It's going to be kicked out to number four for a wide open three. Off the mark, deflected out by Hudson, and it's pulled down by Caitlin Davis. Davis kind of the third member of this trio that Sydney has, averaging, averaging in double, double figures with 10 points per game. Coach Bummy's yelling out the set, trying to get a good opportunity, get a good luck here, trying to work, looks like, for a high-low between Tabor and Hudson. Tabor with a nice little move there for, for the center to back her down, spin inside, back out, lays in right-handed. Tabor in second bucket of the, the game. Worth gets the inbounds pass, Travis, right down the floor, kicks it out for an open shot that's missed, but she's able to pull the rebound down. She's going to go to the foul line again. Kelly Worth's got nine points on the night, one out of two at the line. Yeah, 81% free throw shooter on the season, so someone that's very comfortable stepping up to the line. As Coach Benjamin makes another substitution as number 30, Jordan Deal, Deal checks in for number four, Casey Hughes. You gotta be ready if you're sitting on that bench. He's pulling people left and right, just throwing them in there. And number 33, Kennedy Lewis, checking back in for Springboro. See if Sydney can go. The last couple possessions down the floor, they've had some success, and see if they can find a, find some continued success here as they're moving forward. Hudson's gonna drive again to that left, goes up between two defenders, off the mark, sticks with it. Second attempt's back up and good. And that gives Hudson five points as the score is now just 12-15. Sydney just down by three. Hudson just a, a great inside player, grabs the rebound, good position, puts it right back up and in. Yeah, sticking with the play there, you got to reward. Sometimes it's not that first shot that goes, but you stay with it. She's able to fight through it, get the, get the second chance opportunity. Here's another outside shot by number 12. Haley Crouch, who knocked her first jump shot down tonight, but misses this time. Big possession here for Sydney, considering the way the first quarter has gone for them. They can trim this lead even further that Springboro's enjoying. Yeah, a chance to either cut it to one or maybe even tie the game if they can knock a three down. But it's been the name of the game so far in this first quarter. Another spring or another turnover pushed up the floor by Springboro. The number 30, Jordan D is able to get it in with the left hand and the and one. She's going to go to the line. That's Deal. Deal with the bucket. She's hit two free throws earlier, and she's got four on the night. And it's Sydney's fourth foul of the uh, of the quarter. Deal gets the second one. Another substitution. Hughes didn't sit out very long there. We're going to get as she's coming in for number five, Brianna Graham. A little three quarter court pressure coming up. This time Hudson's going to bring the ball up, kind of taking over the role of point guard here. It's under 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's worked over to the corner, get it to the Hudson on the inside. She's st stuck underneath another second chance opportunity. She's going to put it up and in right before the buzzer. And that's going to move it to 14. We have a score of Sydney 14, Springboro 18 at the end of one. We'll be back after these words from our sponsors. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. Innovation, it's all around us. NK Telco developed a fiber network in our communities over 10 years ago when the competitors were only thinking about it. Increasing bandwidth to make it convenient for the whole family to enjoy online entertainment and gaming. With our IPTV solution, you can enjoy over 80 HD channels providing quality TV and movies for the whole family and even take them on the go with our Watch TV Everywhere app. 
All this from a company that believes in local customer service from people you know and trust. NK Telco, providing services that bring value to your everyday life. Visit the Bunker Restaurant at Arrowhead Golf Course and enjoy the relaxing views, amazing sunsets, and cold refreshments from our spacious dining room or patio. We invite you to stop out during the week or on the weekend for our unique Friday and Saturday specials that are hand-picked weekly by our executive chef. Enjoy our unique sauces, hand-breaded specialty meats, locally grown beef and pork, and delicious desserts that will tantalize any taste bud. Dine in or call ahead for larger parties. You'll be surprised what is new at the Bunker. Welcome back to Troy High School here as the second quarter is kicking off here between Springboro and Sydney. Uh, coming right out of the gate here, it looks like <coughs> Coach Mummy's making an adjustment as Sydney is coming out in a 2-3 zone. Get it to the corner for an open three by number 30, Jordan Deal. Uh, off the mark and rebounded by Sydney. Again, today we'll be selecting a player of the game for Sydney, sponsored by Subway of Anabak in Sydney Walmart. So thank you for your sponsorship there. Nice inside pass down to Sylvia Hudson. And, and Sydney's having no problem of scoring once they get the ball inside. There's some really unusual statistics for the first quarter of play. Sydney had 12 turnovers and Springboro didn't have any. So that's an unusual twist to it all. And uh, those turnovers are what's haunting Sydney right now. Yeah, several points have come off of fast breaks from those turnovers. Uh, and for Sydney, though, your coach Mummy and your squad, you got to be happy. You scored your first possession here in the second quarter, just down two points. And Hudson looks like she's set on going to the basket again. First time we've seen her go to the right, still shoots it with the left hand, but she's going to pick up a foul and go to the foul line. Sydney ended up six out of 11 from the field. They out rebounded Spring Barrel six to four, but the turnover still loom as a huge difference in this one. Yeah, crazy to think. You know, you think if Sydney's able to maximize some more of their possessions there, where the score would be right now. Got a sub coming in here for Sydney is number 15. Alina Kendall's going to check in for her first action of the night. Hudson with her second shot, up and good. Score is now 17-18 on our first National Bank scoreboard. Sydney trailing by just one point. Interesting look here. They came out in the 2-3. They've kind of extended those two guards even up to half court here to try to slow, slow the uh, offense of Springboro down a little bit more. Nice skip pass across the floor over to number four, Casey Hughes, almost picked off by Hudson. Nice drive there by number 30 as Jordan Deal goes reverse layup around Taborn. She's been a role player to step up so far for Springboro. Yeah, Deal made a real nice move. She's got uh, got seven points on the night. Deal's got the, the task of guarding Taborn on the other side as she returns the favor for the layup as the backside help wasn't able to be there. Number 24, Kelly Worth pushes it up the floor. Sydney's able to get back and take a charge. Coach Mummy's all fired up as her team forces another turnover on Springboro. Coach Benjamin's going to call a 30-second timeout. We're going to stay here with you and take a moment to thank our sponsors to help bring you our broadcast. Again, thanks to our sponsors, Moeller Trucking, Minster Bank, Minster Dental, NK Telco Sports, NK Telco, Arrowhead Golf Course, Radio Hospital, Elmwood Assisted Living, Sweeterman Pharmacy, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, and Keyhole Pizza. Again, thanks to all their sponsors. And again, Coach Benjamin think, taking a time out there and trying to regather his troops as Sydney's been able to cut this lead down to one. Yeah, Sydney's really uh, fired up a couple of turnovers, hit a couple of shots inside, and you know, now it's only a one point difference, and they have the basketball as well. And you can see this tournament, tournament atmosphere, and as I said earlier in the game, the spring. Uh, Sydney Faithful have showed up tonight. Their boys also have a game following this down in Vandalia at 8.30. Uh, so it's good to see the crowd, the stands packed for Sydney here. It's been a while since they've had a big run in tournament and uh, having their, their, the support from their community here. There's a skip pass almost thrown out of bounds and then turned over. Or I think we're going to get a foul call to number 30, Jordan Deal, as she tried to get around the Sydney guard. But she's going to get called for the reach. That's Deal's second personal. Look up at the scoreboard. I think that's the 18th foul. So we're going to have a one and one 
And foul, foul shots the rest of the way out here this first half for Sydney. First free throw in and out. It's Caitlin Davis misses a 76.5.5% free throw shooter on the season, not able to connect on the front end. Spring Row brings it back down, facing this 2-3 pressure. Here's another outside shot by number four, Casey Hughes off the mark. You know, a lot of points, seems like, you know, a lot of, a lot of the success Spring Barrel has is from, from those guards. We've seen a lot of driving and layups today. Not a whole lot of outside shots going down. Well, the, the two inside players for Sydney stopped most of that, any kind of penetration inside. And uh, Sydney just needs a, needs a little bit of offense here to, to take the lead here. Yeah, and some more pressure put on there by Hughes forces another turnover on Sydney. And Sydney just averaging 11 turnovers, and how many are we up to already, Dave? Uh, we've got 14 right now. Yeah, 14 turnovers, and we still, we're not even the halfway point in the second quarter. Almost as many turnovers as points. A couple things this zone will allow to do. The bench is a little bit shorter. It's worth against this 2-3. Probably the one player you really got to watch knocks down a, a three-pointer there as she's continuing to have a great, great first half. Into double digits with 14 points. Hudson runs the offense, lets everyone run around. Off the mark on the jump shot. Ball's batted around, knocked out of bounds by Springboro. It's going to stay underneath with Sydney. Same before that 2-3 might be also a way to try to get some of the Sydney players a little bit of break. Nice out of bounds play by Tabor. Misses the first opportunity. And another second chance opportunity for Sydney. I believe that's the third that I can think of. If they've missed their first layup, stayed with it and put it back in. Boy, when it comes to offensive rebounds, Sydney's uh, doing a great job here this evening. Yeah, using their size. There's a jumper from the corner off the mark. Tabor up for the rebound. Sydney down just two points at 21-23, looking at a chance to tie the game. Ball kicked over to, to number 13, Kerry Nuss. One player to knock down a three today. Nuss moves it over to number... 15, Alina Kendall gets inside, kicked out for another three, in and out for number 10, Caitlin Davis, a top three-point shooter, shooting 44% on the season. So, so she's very comfortable being at that three-point line. Springboro working it around again. Work drives in. Sydney does a good job of shutting her off. Yeah, look here, we're going to get a couple ways to attack this zone. There's a good entry pass there into number... Number 10, Molly Shaneline, as she flashed to that elbow, able to catch and knock down the jumper. Nice pass. Yeah, sometimes we reward the, uh, reward the shooter. The pass has to be there sometimes, too. Is another great drive by Hudson. And Something we're seeing Springboro do is as soon as Sydney scores, it's an outlet pass to Kelly Worth. She's pushing it up the floor every time, right down the middle of the floor, trying to get a layup. Didn't work this time as she uh, gets blocked out of bounds by Taborn, but it's going to be inbounded underneath by Springboro. Jada Rowland will come into the game and, and give uh, Selena Taborn a breather inside for Sydney. Yeah, she's played, played the entire game up to this point, so getting, getting the center of break is always a good thing to do, especially as the tempo this game has been for a little bit. Here's a nice drive by number four, Casey Hughes. Thought maybe they called on the floor, but give it the old NBA continuation call there. <laughs> Yeah, well, that was a, definitely an NBA continuation play, but the bucket goes in, and it's a four-point Springboro lead. Nice play by Casey Hughes. Hughes averaged 9.2 points per game on the season. Able to convert on the free throw here for the old-fashioned three-point play. Scores 23-28 in favor of Springboro. Sydney's been able to get it close within two a couple times, but never been able to tie or to gain the lead yet. Entry pass into, into Hudson, but good help side defense. Yeah, Springboro doubles up on Hudson once the ball comes down low. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to do that for both Taborn or Hudson if they're in there. You can definitely see someone's always on that back side. It's going to be <clears throat> thrown in and deflected off a hand of Hudson. Is that number 15 now? 
That's a uh, six turnover over the quarter, 18 overall. The 18, in the half. I missed a couple. 18 turnovers. That's it's amazing to be sitting just five points down with that many turnovers. Springboro works it around. Worth looking to drive. She shut off, kicks it back to the top of the key. Over to Lewis, who has a wide open three, an air ball off the mark, rebounded by Caitlin Davis. Outlets it to Hudson, who's going to push it up the floor here. Sydney down five. We're going to get a timeout called by Coach Mummy, just a 30 second timeout. Again, NK Tucker Sports and its sponsors are pleased to bring you replays of high school girls tournament action. Today's game can be seen on NK Telco, NK Telco Cable Channel 3 or on H HD on Channel 503. Uh, if you're watching this today on the replay of the Monday, February 22nd replay, you can also catch us at, on Tuesday, February 23rd at 6 o'clock. And a new feature we have here, if you want to check any game, we have on-demand games at nktelco.net. You can log on, go into the archives, find any game that we've had over the last several years. So a new feature there that we want our fans to go check out. 218 left here to go in the second quarter with 23-28. Coach Mummy taking her first time out. Looked like the main reason she wanted to do that was Taborn had a break but wanted to get her center back on the floor. Coach Benjamin coming out. Looks like a little run and jump action. The gamble doesn't pay off though as Taborn finds Sylvia Hudson underneath for another lay-in. She continues to have another a big first half here and she's up to 14 points. Lewis directed traffic, works it back around to Hughes. Worth from way downtown, about three feet behind the three-point line, knocks another three down. She's up to 17 points on the game. Again, averages over just over 18 points per game, and she's almost at her average already. Kick to the corner again is number 13, Carrie Doss, knocks down her second three-pointer of the game. We've got 28-31, just a three-point game with 125 left to go in the second quarter. Boy, a real big three-point goal there by Carrie Nuss. Two for two from the field, both of them three points, and they loom large in this one. They definitely have. They've come at huge times. Just when you kind of think Springboro has extended that lead a little bit, she knocks down a three. Springboro patient kicks it over to Hughes for a three. Off the mark. Ball bounces around, pulled, up, pulled by Tabor, who tries to dribble it down the floor, who loses it. Ball gets back into the hands of Worth, and she's going to reorganize Springboro. Take the cues from Coach Benjamin. We're under a minute here to go in the second quarter. A skip pass. They find Worth on the other side. Squares up, knocks another three down. That's Worth at 20 points. Three out of four in the second quarter, and three of those from three-point land. You expect in the big games, your big players are going to step up. And so far for both teams, the seniors and Worth and Hudson are stepping up trying to carry their teams. Tabor with the drive and the spin move. A little too strong, though, as she picks up a charge. It's Tabor's first foul, but she's going to get subbed in for Roland here with just 24 seconds left to go in the, in the quarter. Also got Hudson coming out for her first break of the game. Yeah, Worth is just having a phenomenal first half of play. Four two-point field goals and three threes, as well as three out of four at the free throw line and uh, a 20-point effort here in the first half. Again, I mentioned earlier, all-time leading scorer, but don't want to take that away from her. She's also the all-time leading assist holder at Springboro as well. So she can score and deal. Trying to work it to her again for a three. She's going to... Look to drive, have to give it up. Kicks it to the corner for a baseline jumper off the mark. Rebounded. That's going to end our first half action here as the Springboro Panthers sort of hold a 34-28 lead over the City Lady Yellow Jackets. We'll be back after these messages with our halftime stats. 
When you choose Radio Hospital for your wireless needs, you get 13 convenient locations, no waiting in long lines, premier service after the sale, and all the latest technology with locations in Lima, Finley, Minster, Kenton, Defiance, Napoleon, Wasion, Bryan, and Archbold. We are right around the corner from you. Visit us today and experience the Radio Hospital difference. We are simply neighbors serving neighbors, providing a refreshing alternative to high-pressure stores. Radio Hospital is your Verizon Wireless Premium Retailer. My name is John Kramer. I am 90 years old. I've decided that it was time for me to go to assisted living. I lived by myself for 14 years. I knew I was getting older and life was harder to live. I fell down a couple of times at home. I decided that Elmwood was the place for me to go. It's like a family in here. Choose Elmwood. I believe it. <laughs> Schwiedemann Pharmacies began serving the people of Ogles County in 1916 when Urban Schwiedemann purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Bob from the Keyhole, located on 66. We've been family owned and operated for 30 years. Personally, I think we still make the best pizza in the area. I use a special sausage. Cut fresh ingredients, shred cheese every day. We didn't make a pizza to make a profit. We made a pizza the way we wanted to eat it. Stop in, try us out, dine in or carry out. We also have karaoke every other Saturday. Our communities are filled with history, culture, and ambition. People who put others first. We are a bank that is defined by what we do, not just who we are. We build relationships. We grow businesses. We support communities. We advise the people that matter most to us, our customers. Stop in at any of our five locations, sign up for internet banking, or download our mobile app to better serve you. We can assist you with your next loan, personal accounts, investments, or business needs. Think first. First National Bank. Member FDIC. Hello? I've been in an accident. My van's not drivable, and I have my kids, and they need to get to school. Ma'am. But I can't. Ma'am, relax. We'll take care of it. Thank you. At Sydney Body Car Star, we don't just take care of your vehicle, we take care of you. With Enterprise Rent a Car on site, we get you back to your daily routine with minimal interruptions, returning your car and your family back to normal. Sydney Body Car Star, relax. We'll take it from here. Take a drive to the premier Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram dealership at Bud's in Salina. Enjoy our huge inventory, including the Ram 1500, Jeep, and Chrysler Town & Country. Top-rated Ram dealer in the surrounding area. Convenient six-day service center with Saturday hours, Monday through Thursday until 8 p.m. Bud's has an extensive business link vehicle offering with the Ram ProMaster 4500-5500 truck series. Stop by Bud's today at Route 127 in Salina. Muller Trucking is an experienced family owned and operated company that's been in business for over 30 years. We have a full service fleet with top of the line equipment serving many nationally recognized clients. We are currently looking for experienced, hardworking, over the road drivers that will secure our low 10% turnover rate. We offer great pay, great benefits, frequent home time, and flexible requested time off. Our way of saying thanks to our remarkable employees. We work with you so you can work with us. At Minster Bank, we understand that life can get hectic. That's why when it comes to your banking, we offer the services that make your life simpler with tools like person-to-person -person payments, pop money, mobile and online banking, 
and bill pay. But most of all, Minster Bank is a supportive member of your community with personal relationships and customer service that reach outside of our branches. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Welcome back to Troy High School, where currently stands Springboro 34, Sydney 28. Over to Mr. Dave Helmstetter with our halftime stats. Halftime statistics, uh, Springboro was 12 out of 30 from the field for 40%. Sydney shot well, 12 out of 19 for 63%. Uh, Sydney was two out of two, uh, thanks to carrying us from three-point land. And uh, Springboro hit three out of four three-pointers. At the free throw line, Springboro did a nice job, seven out of eight. Uh, Sydney, two out of five on the board. Sydney had the edge, uh, 13 to seven. But the big stat of the first half, uh, I had Sydney with 17 turnovers and Springboro with only two. So uh, a huge difference in that turnover category, Ben. It's amazing. If you look at the scoreboard, though, to only be down six points, have 17 turnovers, and you let another player on the other team, and Kelly Worth, go off for 20 points, and you're still in this game. So a lot riding here in this second half. Again, undefeated season so far for Sydney at 24-0. Are they going to be able to find a way to bounce back and get to 25-0? Nuss off the mark from, her, from a three there. Hudson with the rebound, and it's missed. And that's kind of been the one big thing on Sydney's side, second chance opportunities. I think they've had six or eight points come from those second chances. Uh, unable to come up with those points there. Kick to the corner for Dio. A big shot to start the second half. As Jordan Dio knocks down the three, they extend this to a nine-point lead. I think it's the biggest lead we've seen in the game today. Yeah, and they're four out of five from three-point land. Taborn off the mark, rebounded by Worth, and straight down the middle of the floor. She's going to drive through three players, puts it in with the left hand, and you could not have asked for a better start if you're Coach Benjamin. It's Kelly Worth's going to go to the free throw line for a chance for a three-point play and a chance to get this to 40 points and a 12-point advantage. Yeah, and uh, for Worth, uh, she's got going to miss the free throw, had a shot for 23 points, and biggest lead of the night. Yeah, but for sure, 11-point lead here. Season high for Worth, just 29 points, never never got into that 30-point mark, and she keeps this pace up. She's got a chance for 40. Sydney working it around. It's kind of interesting seeing the time or coming out from halftime, too. Spring Barrow got out with a couple minutes left, warmed up. Sydney waited to the last possible minute, didn't really even get a warm-up. It just came straight out ready to play. Hudson with the drive and off the mark. And Taborn's going to pick up a foul. She slaps in there trying to knock it away from Worth. Yeah, and Sydney's missed their first four shots here in the second half, and that's not a good omen for the Yellow Jackets. No, it's not. Slow start on their end. On the other end, Springboro's lighting it up. First, first National Bank scoreboard, 28-39 right now. Long way to go here, but Sydney's got to find some kind of rhythm and pace here to try to get back in this game. Sydney staying in their 2-3 zone. Springboro working to be patient here. Loose control. It's tapped backed out. Gathered. Kicked over. Reversed again. Deal for an 18-foot jump shot. In and out. Rebounded. Up again and missed. Rebounded again and missed. It's going to be pulled out. Worth ready to pull the trigger there on a three. Couldn't find it. And it's going to get knocked away there. So we're going to have a turnover as Worth... Kind of bobbled it, traveled as she drove into the, the tall trees of Sydney. Springboro quite a bit more aggressive on the rebounding side there on that possession and throughout the early start of this uh, uh, second half. Yeah, definitely good effort there. Number tw 12, Haley Crouch was trying to battle it, but it's kind of the first opportunity we really see all those three. Here's a skip pass over to Davis for three off the mark. Taborn up and over with the rebound. She's going to kick it out to a, for another three opportunity off the rim, and it's going to go out of bounds as Sydney has just come out ice cold here to start the third quarter. Yeah, missed her first six shots, so. Yeah, sometimes if the defense is, or offense is struggling, can you come down here, force a turnover, try to get a fast break point, try to get to the foul line, try to do something to get your offense going. Springboro sets their offense. Looks like they've executed it well. They're going to get an open three. Oh, it's deflected, actually, by number 10, Caitlin Davis, who comes back in and gets and gets the rebound. 
Nice stop there. Can they turn this, turn this stop into some offense? High-low action, third down from Taborn to Hudson. It's off the mark and it's taken away by Deal. Deal's kind of been all over the place today. Worth open for another three at the top of the key and uh, in and out. Rebounded by Crouch this time. Third time a charm. It's her third offensive rebound here in this second half. She puts it up off the glass and in. Extends it to a 28-41 lead. We're going to have a full timeout taken by Sydney. We're going to take a break, too. We'll be right back after these messages. Clear. You owe it to yourself twice a year at checkup at Minster Dental Care. Our specialized doctors, Jim Overman, Jim Myring, Sean Sharp, and Philip Slonkowski are ready to give you the smile you've always dreamed of at any stage of your life. Pediatric, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry are just a few of the services offered. Our latest advancements include Seric Dentistry that allows us to create and deliver a crown in one convenient visit. We're located on State Route 66 in Minster, 419-628-3380 to schedule your appointment today. You owe it to yourself. NK Telco Sports, Ohio's leading sports broadcasting company, is dedicated to sports coverage, filming over 120 collegiate and high school sporting events that bring quality content and excellent sportsmanship to the big screen. Team up with us as an NK Telco sponsor and receive many benefits, commercials that will be seen by thousands of viewers, multiple name mentions, live web ads, monthly bill stuffers, and discounted network ad insertion spots. Packages are available for any budget. Contact us today. NK Telco is your hometown provider. We are Northwest Ohio's leading independent broadband company that brings fiber to your home. Larger competitors talk about it, but we've been delivering our fiber network for over 10 years, guaranteeing more bandwidth and services. Over 80 HD channels, Echo Whole Home DVR, interactive channel guides, in demand, internet based phone systems, and local news and sports channels. Innovative, futuristic, and cost effective. Welcome back to district semifinal action here between between the Sydney Yellow Jackets and the Springboro Panthers as Sydney just comes out of a timeout there trying to regather the troops. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it at the beginning of the game about Springboro wanting to play it up tempo and, and I think that's really been to their benefit, especially here as they started the third quarter, Ben. Yeah, it definitely appears Sydney's definitely come out flat uh, almost halfway through the through the quarter already and still stuck on that number 28. Springboro made a little adjustment in their defense here as they moved into a 2-3 zone coming out of that timeout. Collapse on the big people and let Sydney shoot from the outside. Into Taborn, who throws it out, just doesn't watch the pass into her hands. It's lost. And Worth, again, straight down the middle of the floor with the push. <clears throat> kicks it over to Hughes, who kicks it back out into the hands of Hudson, who loses it. Springboro fortunate to keep hold of the ball. Yeah, and Worth is going to get the offense under control, get things settled in. Showing some great floor leadership. Yeah, Sydney has moved back to the man-to-man. -man. Off the mark there for Springboro and re rebounded down by Sydney. And they got to get going here as they're struggling to find points. Nuss has been the one to hit the big shots today. As here's a shot by number 14, Ashley Egan, blocked out of bounds by Haley Crouch. Sydney's uh, 0 for 7 here in the. Uh, in the third quarter of play, need to get some offense here to stop the streak. Trying to find something. Here's another turnover stolen away by Worth. Up with the right hand and in, and she's fouled by number 23, Sadie Timmons, who had just checked into the game. Again, Worth, a great, great season so far this year. Just some stats for the G Walk. She was second in scoring, fourth in assist, third in field goal, playing, the, playing a guard role. And fifth and steals as she just had a steal there and knocks that one down. She's 25 now, on the night. Up to 25 and just amazing performance so far from Kelly Worth. Kicks it out to Timmons. Back out to Taborn for a three. Strong on the shot. Deflected away. And here come the Panthers on the run again. Hughes is going to make the smart choice. The one on three didn't look too good. Inside out. Springboro oh. can be patient. They can take some time off the clock. 16-point lead. Yeah, that scored Sydney 10-0 so far in this third quarter. Worth with the drive. She goes up with 
the shot, no foul caught, sticks with it, puts it in this time, and the foul is called, and she's gonna step to the line for another chance at a three-point play. 28-46, 18-point lead. A, a total dominating quarter here so far by Springboro. Yeah, we're at the 242 mark of the third quarter, and the Yellow Jackets still looking for their first field goal of the second half. More subs coming back in for Springboro. And again, we talked a little bit about that. The up and down tempo has been in favor of Springboro, and they've utilized their bench a little better. And and Springboro is really packing their their zone in, and that's and one thing that you know Sydney can't dribble through it. You got to pass through a two-three zone. Yeah, you're right. See, see their ball movement or dri dribble penetration to try to bust up a up a zone. But when your strengths are in the inside, they're packing in the paint. They're going to try to make Sydney beat them from the outside. And another turnover knocked away by Jordan Deal with another steal by her. And Springboro was 21 and three on the season. Haven't lost a game since the calendar turned into 2016. Their last loss was uh, over in Indianapolis. They went and played a tournament. Yeah, and you look at Sydney, what, 40 straight regular season victories? Some amazing numbers by both these two teams, man. Definitely, but so far the Panthers have dominated the game, especially coming out here in the third quarter. As their lead's up to 19, it's playing a little bit of control. Slow down the tempo now that they've built their lead. Going to pull Sydney out, make him guard him farther away from the basket, see if this opens up any opportunities for some dribble drive or backdoor cuts. And you got a nice player like Kelly Worth and some good ball handlers like Springboro has. Yellow Jackets are in a tough spot here. Lewis dribbles, almost loses it to number 10, Caitlin Davis. Kicked over, ball rolls around, off the mark, rebounded by Lewis, missed, pulled down by Taborn, outletted to to Sylvia Hudson, and we'd like to see it probably a strong drive here as she's swarmed by Burrow players. The ball's deflected out of bounds by Springboro. All, all the subbing we've seen from Springboro, though, I don't know if I've seen Kelly Worth leave the floor. If it has been, it wasn't for long. Yeah, she's a, definitely a, a, a standout player and great stamina as well. Hudson triple team, kicks it out to Taborn. She's trying to fight through the defense, throws it up, deflected. Hudson sticks with it, and we finally break the scoring drought with under a minute left to go here in the third quarter as Hudson lays it in. First two points of the second half. It's now 30-47 on our first National Bank Think First scoreboard. Boy, just at the, what, 50-second marker or so, Sydney finally gets that first back of the basket of the second half. Yeah, over seven minutes without scoring. It's not how Coach Mummy, I'm sure, uh, Tried to draw it up at halftime. Yeah, and, and you know, the next thing you got to think about how you get back into this game uh, with that kind of a deficit and, you know, putting a full court pressure on really isn't the way Sydney likes to play the game. Dribble drive. It looks like Hudson's going to pick up a foul. The fifth team foul on Sydney. No foul so far on Burrow. It's a quick inbounds pass off the mark by Worth. Up again by Springboro, pulled down by Taborn, and Coach Mummy is saying, go, 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 as the time is winding down. Just 10 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Taborn's going to spot up for a trail three. She banks it in. A huge shot by Selena Taborn. It's a long three-quarter court shot by Worth off the mark, but a slow start for Sydney. Last five points, though, in the quarter. It's 33, Sydney, 47, Springboro. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after these messages. Visit the Bunker Restaurant at Arrowhead Golf Course and enjoy the relaxing views, amazing sunsets, and cold refreshments from our spacious dining room or patio. We invite you to stop out during the week or on the weekend for our unique Friday and Saturday specials that are hand-picked weekly by our executive chef. Enjoy our unique sauces, hand-breaded specialty meats, locally grown beef and pork, and delicious desserts that will tantalize any taste bud. Dine in or call ahead for larger parties. You'll be surprised what is new at the Bunker. 
Independence is something you can easily take for granted. For the elderly and disabled, independence can be especially challenging and require more thought and planning. As a caregiver or family member, how do you keep a loved one active, independent, and safe? Radio Hospital has a solution to provide users and their families with security and convenience both inside the home as well as out and about with the press of a single button. Whether you need assistance for yourself or a loved one, visit your nearest Radio Hospital location. We are back here for fourth quarter action as the Springboro Panthers are a 47-33 lead and they'll inbound the ball first. Dave, what does Sydney have to do to get back in this game? Well, they, they have to, somehow they got to get some offense going and we saw a couple of things in the, in the end of the quarter, but there's got to be a little bit more balance in the Sydney attack and that'll open things even up more for Hudson and Taborn inside. I think that's what's really got to happen. They get into foul trouble a little bit here in, in the next couple of minutes, and that's what Springboro is going to try to do, get them into the, you know, into the one and one and the free throw situation. It's going to be very difficult for Sydney once that happens. They're going to trap here to start the fourth quarter. Yeah, we're going to see some scrambling defenses. As you said, Coach Mumby is calling for players to come and try to trap. They have no other option but to try to force the tempo here. Uh, that's going to lead for chances for some opportunities on the backside there. It was a good recovery by Hudson to get the block. And Kelly Frew, boy, she's just had an outstanding game so far, Ben. You know, with 28 points and just a, a, a great floor game as well. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a foul here against, again, against Sydney. It's going to be the sixth team foul. So the rest of the way out, yeah, Sydney wants to be aggressive, but from here on out, every foul is going to put Springboro on the foul line as well. Nice out of bounds execution as number 12, Haley Crouch is wide open and lays it in. That extend the lead, extends the lead to 16 and almost a minute ran off the clock there on that one possession. Yeah, wide open shot by Couch and she hits it off the inbounds pass. Nice skip pass, Tabor just hit a three to end the quarter. Goes for another one off the mark. It's rebounded by number 30, Deal. She pushes it up, gets it to Crouch again. She's coming out hot in this fourth quarter. She's got the first four points. We're going to have to have a timeout taken by Sydney. We're going to stay here. Again, take a minute to thank our sponsors to help bring us this broadcast. Again, we have Keyhole Pizza, Kogi Plumbing and Heating, Sweeterman Pharmacy, Elmwood Assisted Living, Radio Hospital, Arrowhead Golf Course, NK Telco, NK Telco Sports, Minster Dental, Minster Bank, and Moeller Trucking. Also, we'll be selecting a player of the game tonight, sponsored by Subway of Anna Botkins and Sydney Walmart. Well, you, you look at that quarter, the third quarter again, and Springboro also did a nice job and on the boards. They out-rebounded Sydney 10-7, uh, to 7, and that, when you kind of think about the way the first half went, that's a pretty uh, a big statistic for, uh, for the Panthers. Yeah, one of the things that Sydney did have an advantage on was rebounding and op offensive rebounds and second chance opportunities. And uh, Springboro found a way to kind of turn that to their favor. So they were able to outscore Sydney 13 to five. Also want to take a minute to share some interesting news we have coming your way. Brush Pile Fishing is bringing the Crappie USA Tournament back to Grand Lake St. Mary's April 15th and 16th. Grab a fishing partner and sign up at brushpilefishing.com. Sydney brings it out. Again, you got to find something quick here. We're under seven minutes to go. Springboro staying in the zone, packing it in. Taborn's going to take a 19-foot jump shot off the mark. Tapped away by Lewis. She sticks with it. And as she's going, loses balance. They're going to get a foul called on number 10, Caitlin Davis. Looked like two players going for the ball there, but it goes in the favor of Springboro. And Lewis is going to go to the line for a one-and-one. Well, with six plus minutes left, uh, you know, Springboro is going to go to the line an awful lot here. And, and uh, with the foul situation, they're going to sit back, take some time off the clock. And with the uh, strong floor players that they do have, it's going to be a big advantage for the Panthers. Lewis, is miss, Lewis misses the first one pulled down by Hudson. It was 28-34 at halftime. And we're now sitting at 33-51. 
Here's an outside three on, in and out as Kerry Nuss, who's knocked down two three-pointers already in the game, is off the mark. And unfortunately for Sydney, time's just running out here. they got to find a way to get some buckets and get them quick. Winner of tonight's game will play the winner of Cincinnati Mount Notre Dame or Hamilton on February 27th down at the Harrison District Final. Inside to Worth, who lays it in. And for the first time this year, she hits 30 points. Just no answer from Sydney to the effort that Worth's given tonight. Just a good, solid player, and uh, she knows what to do with the basketball once she gets it. Taborn battles inside as Crouch almost got the steal, but Taborn rips it away and goes up for two, gets fouled, going to go to the foul line. Sydney, only three players to hit the scoring column tonight. As Tabor misses the first one. She's got 11. Hudson's got 16, 14 of those coming in the first half. And Carrie Nuss hitting those two threes. Other than that, no other Sydney players been able to crack the scoring column. And in a tournament game where the, the opposing team is really trying to focus on those bigs, they needed some players to step up. Taborn strong on the second one. Hudson tries the battle to keep it alive. She's going to pick up an over the back call. It's Hudson's third foul. One positive is it's going to put Sydney or Springboro straight to the foul line. No time is going to come off the clock. Worth is uh, 11 out of 18 from the field, and for that 30 points that you talked about, Ben. And it's it's been a combination: of outside shooting, inside shooting, attacking, and getting to the line. And she scored every which way possible. It's nice to watch a high school girls basketball game and see a player like this and she steps up to the game here and she's playing really well. Ball tipped out of bounds. It's going to go to Sydney. Again, quite a matchup here. And Kelly Worth and Hudson, the players of the year in their respective divisions. There's Caitlin Davis getting to the scoring column, her first three of the game. And again, Coach Mummy saying, Come, you got to pick up. We know you're tired, we know you're exhausted, but it, down 18 points. So just over five minutes left to go. Here's Crouch with another jumper off the mark. Here comes Hudson with the push. Going to kick it out for a long two, it goes. Foot on the line. Sadie Timmons able to knock that down and gets two more players to crack the scoring column here in like the last 30 seconds. Comes some full court pressure. Springboro breaks it. Got the trap in the corner. They kick it out. Unfortunate turnover there as number three, Kira Kunash, steps out of bounds. She tried to drive baseline. We're going to have a full timeout taken by Springboro as Coach Benjamin wants to calm down his team. We're going to take a break and we'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. Schwederman Pharmacies began serving the people of Ogways County in 1916 when Urban Schwederman purchased the building and business from J.H. Hoffman. The New Bremen location is one of the longest running pharmacies in the country, with over 110 years of serving its patrons. Since then, four more stores have been added, Coldwater, St. Mary's, Minster, and Wapakoneta to round out the group. Our services include prescription refills, home medical equipment, nursing home services, customized compounded medication, vaccinations, and so much more. We're back at Troy High School with 4.40 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And Springboro just caught a timeout to try to regroup as Sydney's scored five quick points uh, to cut the lead down to 38-54, but Sydney's got to continue this hot shooting if they want to get back in this game. Skip pass knocked away by Crouch. She's going to go the full distance, throws it up and is fouled as Caitlin Davis hustles back on defense. 
rather put her at the free throw line to make him earn them, make her earn the points, than get the easy breakaway layup. Yeah, second half, uh, Sydney has had six turnovers, which uh, when you take a look at the first half when they had the, had the 17, uh, it's better, but nonetheless, 23 for the game, that's not too encouraging. No, just average just over 11 a game, so they're you know, double the turnovers they're used to giving up in a, in a game. Got to give some of that credit to Springboro and the pressure they put on the guards and guarded the bigs inside to not make it easy to get it inside at all. Yeah, second half, they've done a great job of, of containing those bigs. Roland with, tries to get the skip pass and again stolen by number four, Casey Hughes. Deal wanted to pull it. She's going to decide to drive in for the easy left handed layup. It looks like the steam in the sails of Sydney is, is kind of coming out. Yeah, Deal just made a, made a nice move right to the basket and scores. Roland with a three from the corner off the mark. Rebounded by Burrow and getting into the hands of Kelly Worth, who, if you're going to have it anywhere, the 81% free throw shooter, probably the person you want handling the balls. There's probably pressure coming. The ball's worked around. Skip it over to Hughes for the open jumper off the mark. Pulled down by Taborn. Over to Roland. <clears throat> Got to find a guard to get the ball into the hands to here for Sydney. Davis looks to drive. Kicks it to Hudson. Davis from a corner three. Her second three of the half. She's it. Two out of three here in the second half for Davis and a couple of threes, and that was a big one. A big one down to a 16-point lead now. That's one thing Springboro can do if they keep taking, you know, forcing shots they don't really have to take right now is one way Sydney could possibly get back in this game. Davis inside to Hudson. Hudson looks to drive. She finally gets to the paint, is able to lay it in. Sydney players just look exhausted as Worth is able to drive right through this. Goes into Tabor and picks up the foul and gets the roll. There's nothing Kelly Worth can't do tonight. It falls in. She's at 32 for a chance to get to 33. Substitutes coming in for both teams here with 2.33 left in the clock. Tabor picks up her third foul. She's going to take a little break here. She's been hustling up and down the floor for a while now. Another full timeout taken by Coach Benjamin as Worth knocks down the free throw. Dave, it's been a, been a good game so far, uh, especially on the side of Springboro. We talked about at the beginning of the game, it was kind of a battle of two opposites, guard play versus inside play, and Springboro's being able to prevail. Yeah, and you know, this, the third quarter, when you look back at, back at it, Sydney probably hasn't had too many difficult quarters all season. You look at that, eight, uh, that time in the third quarter when it, it, seven, almost over seven minutes before they got a bucket, and Springboro, of course, with that outstanding guard play led by Kelly Worth and, and some of her teammates, uh, they just they took command and at that point in time. Very difficult for a team with two with the, the size that Sydney has to play catch up. And, and uh, you see a little bit of a tired Sydney squad here with two and a half minutes or so to play. Yeah, when you're used to playing that inside game and a little bit of a slower pace, get it into your post players. And you got a team, even when Sydney is scoring, Burroughs trying to push it up the floor right away. So it's been good execution on Spring Burroughs' part here. And a little over two minutes left to go. Can Sydney get real hot? Try to find some way to get back in this game. Davis dribbling around. Inside to Hudson. It's deflected away as Worth's been also tasked with guarding, guarding Sylvia Hudson a lot of the night. She gets another steal. Worked over to Deal. Back up to Hughes up top, and we're going to see a lot of perimeter, perimeter play, work around. Can they get any drives or easy layups? Just running time off the clock. And they've got a host of good ball handlers, so they'll take their time, spread the, spread it out a little bit. Hughes back over to Worth. Worth drives in. She's going to kick it out. 
Number five, Brandon Graham decides to pull it back out. It's working the clock. Inside, pass from Worth into number 10, Molly Shane line. She's fouled. She's going to go to the line for two. Don't know if it would have been a, don't know if it would have made a big difference, but definitely a big foul discrepancy here as the fouls are 10 to 1. Sydney with 10 and Springboro just one foul here in the second half. Shane Line able to knock down the first one. Off the mark on the second one, pulled down by Sylvia Hudson. Sydney moves it up quick. Got to try to find an open shot as quick as I can. Nice pass into Hudson as she lays it in. Hudson's going to get to 20 points on the game, averaging 21.1 on the season. Phenomenal career, four-year varsity letter winner, all-time leading scorer, Sydney history with over 1,500 points. Unfortunately for her, it looks like her season, or her career is going to come to an end tonight against a good Springboro team. Under a minute to go, Ben, and Springboro just simply working the clock. And Pierce Sydney's kind of guarding the ball, but not trying too hard to, to make anything happen. They're going to let this clock wind down here. Comes a double team. Hughes handles it, dribbles out of it, kicks it back out. Springboro faithful coming to their feet, giving a round of applause to the effort. You know, it's, it's not often you see a third game into the tournament. You have a 24-0 versus a 21-3 and in the district semifinal. Uh, usually you catch those later down the road, but the way the brackets worked out, these two teams met. The clock's winding down here. That's going to do it for us here with our game. It is Sydney 45, Springboro 61. Congratulations to the Springboro Panthers on their victory. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the end of the game, that end of the game stats and our final thoughts. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant, whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Bob from the Keyhole, located on 66. We've been family owned and operated for 30 years. Personally, I think we still make the best pizza in the area. I use a special sausage. Cut fresh ingredients, shred cheese every day. We didn't make a pizza to make a profit. We made a pizza the way we wanted to eat it. Stop in, try us out, dine in, or carry out. We also have karaoke every other Saturday. Welcome back to our game recap of the action tonight between the Sydney Lady Yellow Jackets and the Springboro Panthers. Uh, tonight, the Sydney Yellow Jackets just didn't have enough as they lost 45 to 61 uh, in a great effort put forth by Springboro. With our end of game stats, here's Mr. Dave Helmstetter. Yeah, taking a look at it, the statistics for tonight's tournament game, uh, Springboro, they were 22 out of 52, 55 from the field for 40%. Uh, Sydney 19 out of 40 for 48 percent. Three-point line, uh, Sydney was five out of five. Uh, Springboro four out of six. Free throw line, Sydney two out of seven. While uh, Springboro connected on 10 out of 13 uh, free throws attempts for a 77 percent clip. On the board, Sydney did win the board battle, 27 to 21. Turnovers again, as we talked in the first half, that statistic looms very large. Uh, we had Springboro with only four, and Sydney had 25. Our leading scorers for, uh, for tonight's game, uh, Sydney was led by uh, Sylvia Hudson with 20 points, and Selena Taborn had 11. Uh, Davis and Nuss hit uh, a pair of threes each for six points each, and uh, off the bench, uh, Ro uh, Roland uh, did not score, and Timmons came off and had a basket. And uh, that gave uh, the City Yellow Jackets a total of 45. 
for the victorious Springboro Panthers. They were led by their outstanding uh, uh, guard, uh, Kelly Worth. Kelly had 33 points for the night, uh, followed by uh, Deal with 12. Couch had, uh, had nine. Hughes had three, and Shane Line had three, and Ingram off the bench with a point, and a totals up to the 61 to 45 total. But uh, boy, Sydney looks back, Ben, and they look back on that third quarter when they came out and missed what first eight or nine shots, and uh, didn't score until five points until the final, really 40 or 50 seconds of the third quarter, and by then damage done and Springboro's in control. Yeah, you're right. You throw that on top of all the turnovers they had in the first half. You know, every time you have a turnover, that's one less one less chance or opportunity you have of trying to score. And uh, unfortunately for, for Sydney, it wasn't because of a lack of effort, uh, but the, the speedy guard play of Burrow kind of was able to overcome the size and strength that Sydney has. Uh, we don't want to select the player of the game tonight. Uh, again, sponsored by Subway of Anna Buckins and Sydney Walmart. And that's going to go to the senior Sylvia Hudson, uh, again, with 20 points. So congratulations to her, uh, kind of sure it's not the way she wanted to go out. Uh, senior this year, again, the all-time leading scorer, a phenomenal career at Sydney, uh, a lot of success over the last four years. But unfortunately for her, uh, it's going to be the first loss. And that's going to bring Sydney. They're going to end the season at 24-1. and Springboro is going to move on. Uh, their record's now 22-3. and And again, they're going to play the winner of Cincinnati Mountain or Dame or Hamilton uh, next Saturday down at the Harrison District Final. We want to thank you for watching our broadcast tonight. Uh, my name is Ben Ayers. Alongside me was Dave Helm Helmstetter. And running the production today was Mr. Isaac Sell. We appreciate you watching our broadcast today of the Sydney Yellow Jackets versus Springboro Panthers. Thank you again and have a great night.